Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, as you guys know, uh, the passing of my father-in-law has really been a heavy, heavy impact on our family. And uh, and uh, with caring for him, uh, it's been been a tremendous undertaking. Uh, one that I will certainly never regret trying to do all we could for him. Uh, but uh, I, I haven't been too often here with you, uh, as of course, as we have dealt with this emergency in our family. But this this message today is also kind of inspired from that from that ordeal. Uh, I know that when we were in the really depth of the battle with trying to save his life. My wife came to me with a, with a little small New Testament Bible she had. And she had two places marked. One of those places was the book of Acts right here, chapter 14. The other was over in the book of Luke. And uh, she'd asked me to read those. And she said, Is it, does it mean anything to you? And when I read this one here in the book of Acts, it certainly meant something to me. I wanted to share that with you, and I want to share with you even more in depth what this is, because the battle that we have fought in our family now for, I would have to say, at least a month through sicknesses and things like that has been an attack of the enemy against us from the very beginning. And... As Paul said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against spiritual wickedness, against the archons, is literally the word he uses there, uh, of this world. But there's some others, there's some other verses here that go so amazingly well with this. And I think that you, as our brothers and sisters out there, you need to be aware at how to arm yourselves as well. So I wanted to share this with you here. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of Jews and also of Greeks, believed. It's talking about the apostles is what Paul's talking about. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Notice who stirred this up. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. And we've certainly seen some miracles, friends. We've seen some amazing miracles. But watch what the scripture says. But the multitude of the city was divided, part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. Let's scroll down. And when there was an assault made, both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews, with their rulers, which, by the way, is the word archons, to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled into Lystra, into Derby, cities of Lyconia, and into the region that lieth around about, and there they preached the gospel. You see, they started off doing well, and to some degree, as we see in the scripture, half ended up believing, the other half did not. But then there was a stirrup made against them. And even though the stirrup was made against them, in other words, they were there. There was an accomplishment. There was a great move of God that was going on. And might, maybe we could even say that in the ministry that God has given us here, we've we've stirred up certain forces. And the interesting thing is, if you look at this. Very passage here, verse 2, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against their brethren. 
against the brethren, not their brethren, I apologize, the brethren. Long time, therefore, above they speak in boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony to the word of his grace, granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands, but the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. And we have watched that in our ministry. And this, this sickness has been pretty much the stoning itself. And when there was an assault made, both of the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them, the archons. Now, who's, who's the one that's using them? Now, the word them is actually not in the Greek text as we have in italicized. It's to, to use despitefully. Who, the rulers, the archons, the fallen angels, so to speak, here we would say, were using both the Gentiles and the Jews. And that was to stone them or to kill them. Find a way to silence them. You see, the thing is, we're dealing, as Paul said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But there are powers in behind the scene that affect what goes on in our realm. And you can have people that maybe are well-intended. But something's going on behind that that even they don't know. And then that's how things can end up taking a turn for the worse. You know, it reminds me, I was told one day, and I knew this from the years that I spent in service. One thing that certain alphabetical agencies will do if they really want to make a point to you, they attack your loved ones. Now, we have some wonderful friends that have been so kind to us. That's not what I'm implying there. But there are forces in behind the scenes that have been on the attack. Those archons. I'll leave that right there. I want to share with you, though, and maybe this will help really make sense of some of these things here. As we look at some of the scriptures here that I have found in light of what is in Acts chapter 14. Now, in this one here, we're looking at um, Matthew chapter 20. And, uh, and I pulled up the Hebrew Matthew specifically because I thought it was interesting more so in the Hebrew Matthew than I did in the um, than than what I saw in in the uh, Greek version of Matthew. And I'm sitting here. Let me see which verse that was because I didn't actually highlight it here. So yeah, it's up here, verse 25. Jesus brought them near to him and said to them, Know that the princes of the Gentiles have dominion over them, and their great ones seek to sub subdue them. Now, let me, let me do this. Just, we'll back up just a little bit. I want to back up so we kind of catch where we're the theme of this, and then I'm going to really focus on verse 25 in Matthew chapter 20. Let's go to verse 22. Jesus answered them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you all able to endure the suffering and death that I am going to endure? They said, We are able. Then he said to them, Drink my cup, but that you should sit on my left or my right is not for me to grant to you, but to the one who is prepared before my father. The ten heard this, and it was a matter of anger in their eyes in regard to the two brothers. If you remember, there was a lady that come and asked about, you know, grant that my two sons may sit on your right hand and left hand. Jesus brought them near to him and said to them, Know that the princes of the Gentiles have dominion over them, and their great ones seek to subdue them. It will not be so among you, because 
He who wishes to be great among you will serve you. Who among you wishes to be first will be your servant. Just as the Son of Man did not come that they might serve him, but that he might serve and give himself as a ransom for many. But verse 25, they did not translate correctly from Hebrew to English. And I want to read it to you so you kind of know what it does say. Eliyad the Yomer Lahem Da'a Shenashia Hagoim Rodeim Behem Vegadolehem. Okay, this is the important part there. Vegadolehem. We're getting at the last part of the verse because first we're, we're reading the part here just so you know what we're doing in English. Da'a Shenashia Ha. Hagoim, okay, no, all right, the princes of the Gentiles, and it's princes, it's in the plural, Rodin, they have dominion, Behem, upon, over you, then he says, Vehagadolehem, and the great ones, so in other words, the princes, like the archons, because in the Greek that word princes is archons, but there's ones greater than the archons. So in this case here, the very word is more like the president. The very, the very, in other words, if you look in the way our country is set up, or, 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 or Russia is set up, or China is set up, you have Xi Jinping, you have, you have Pre uh, President Putin, you have President Biden, but they are the, they are the archons, they are the chief, they are the ones that the rulers have set in there, but there's ones that are greater, and that's what it says. Vegodelehem and the great ones. They seek or they are there to subdue what? Your soul. You see, verse 25 is dealing far deeper than what we realize. Verse 25, you know, because see, there, there, there's this big, there's this big controversy over who's going to get to sit at the right hand, uh, right and left hand side of Jesus when he, when he's in power and everything. And Jesus was trying to explain, you know, that's that's something that's been determined by the Father. That's not doesn't doesn't work like that with our Heavenly Father, like it does with you know, because he he takes that brief moment here to kind of give you an idea what goes on in the realm of this world here in comparison. So he said Jesus brought them near to him and said to them, "Know that the princes, the the the, the leaders of the Gentiles." Have dominion over them, but the great ones, they're there to subdue the soul. You know, when I look at a passage like this, it has a great impact on me because I know, for example, from meetings I've been in, the reptilians have constantly been uh, working on the on, a, on the method to be able to capture souls when it leaves the body. I know that um, even in the Mayan documents that are not public, that this is what the battle was several thousand years ago when this Planet X came by. It was a battle because the reptilians wanted to use human host. Remember there, I think it was David that said that, spoke about the evil woman seeks for the precious soul. He's not talking, uh, that's even deeper than what most people realize. But um, what's fascinating is that no matter how we look at this, they don't translate this quite correctly. Now, I find that fascinating too, because that's actually in, uh, like I said, Matthew, 
I want to share that with you real quick from the Greek, because the Greek also is not translated correctly to English, but it's actually written in the, in the Greek properly. But Jesus called them unto him and said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles, all right, let's look at that word right there, archons. Now that, that word can be used both as like fallen angel type uh, uh, characters as well as just leaders that have been put in authority. And I realize that. So we could say the princes of the archons of the, or of the Gentiles, excuse me, exercise dominion over them and they that are great, the great ones, the megas, exercise authority upon them is what we have written there. But what does it really say? Exercise authority over the baffling wind. If you remember the other day we talked about this, it was in another scripture, and I said to you, I said that baffling wind is the soul. It's just another terminology for soul. And that's just now that's my hypothesis on that. I, I don't say that as a doctrine, but that's what it appears to be. Now, when we look in the Hebrew Matthew to confirm that. We actually find out that, yes, it's exactly what it has to be because the Hebrew Matthew literally does translate that as nephesh, la nephshim, okay? For, in other words, the battle, the, the, the great ones that are even over the archons, they're there to subdue, and that subdue is in the plural, for the souls, plural. Just interesting how Jesus just drops that in there. And I just find that fascinating. Now, I want to share another one with you here. It's kind of, this one's just kind of interesting here. This is one that's going to, it'll, it'll take for those that really have ears to hear, as Jesus said. I'll just, because I'm going to kind of leave this one for those that have the ear to hear what the Spirit saith. In this case, what the Word of God says. I want to just see how many people can really and truly pick up on what's written right here. And i got to find this one again. It's another one of these ones where chapter 9 of Matthew here uh, was a scripture I found there. Oh, yeah, here we go. Verse 34. And, and again, and we'll back up just a little bit. Let's go to verse 32. Jesus went out from there, and they, they brought before him a dumb man who was, who was demon-possessed. Now, if you remember, I also, in that message not too long ago, I talked about how that uh, when the reptilians came through on Planet X and, you know, they were trying to take human, uh, uh, they wanted humans in order to, to be able to possess their bodies, basically. And I actually used that very scripture there. I didn't, I didn't have it up on the screen at the time, but I said that it's kind of like when Jesus cast out the demons of the maniac of Gadaria. Human hosts. They wanted human hosts. I said, I'm wondering if that's not kind of like what Jesus was dealing with. But this one here, the man is demon-possessed. He cast out the demons so that the dumb man spoke and the crowds were amazed and said, We have not seen the like of this in Israel. And the Pharisees said, Truly, in the name of demons, he cast out demons. Now, I'm going to read this to you in Hebrew. This, one's, this one really just blows me kind of away. And, and, and I'm just curious if anybody pays attention. You're right. They um rule, apel you know, all right, and, and said the Pharisees, be'emet, you know, in truth, be'sham, in the name, hashadim. And that would say, hashadim. In the name of demons, he cast out demons. And now they accuse Jesus of being a demon, right? Now, just so you can see, right, give you a little bit easier. Here's your root of that word right there, shad. Shad is a demon, right? And he cast out. So they're, they're saying that he, you know, that, you know, Satan is the devil in Hebrew, but also the word shad. Uh, let me take you down here. I'll kind of highlight that for, for oh, oh, goodness, did I mess up? All right. I see what happens if you touch the word, it, it messes you up. So let me back it back up again. Didn't mean for that to happen. Um, if you if you pluralize it in there, Shadim. All right, so let's add the mem sofit there to it. Let me get the 
I don't know where my where did this thing go where I can type on here so well I'm not able to type with it let's see if I go the other way oh there we go there but where is that keyboard hiding at somewhere my keyboard is hiding I don't know why but uh, let me see let's just see what we can get here all right, maybe, 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 maybe now I can do it. Let's see. Turn our virtual keyboard. Let's see here. Oh. Yeah, I don't want the virtual keyboard on. Show the keyboard. There we go. All right, now here we go. All right, so you have Sheen. Come on, work now. Why is it now? Okay, wait a minute. Well, now we got to get it up there. Here we go. Sheen, dial it. That's your root, Shad. Okay. Yod Mim. Shadim. Demons. There you go, right there. Shadim. Demons. Or devils. Um, if you did do just a uh, uh, Sheen Dalit Yod, now there they have enough, but you also notice too, you have it all three right here. Shad, uh, Shad, uh, Shad, uh, Devilish, demonic, ghoulish. So they're telling us that he's calling on the name of the devils, which we know is a complete lie. And he does this by, because he calls on the name uh, of the demons to cast them out. Now, of course, Jesus says, you know, what does he say? He went around the city's towers teaching in the synagogues and preaching the good tidings and healings every illness and every sickness. Now, I think in the Greek we get, you know, it goes into, you know, he says, well, if I cast out the devils by, by the power of Beelzebub, then who do your, who do your, children cast them out by and i think he does that in the hebrew too let's just say jesus saw the crowds have pity on them we go, okay, let's see, let's see, no no okay he doesn't get into that here but he does in the greek which i always found fascinating the way he does that all right now let's go into ephesians real quick and then we're going to look a little bit in, in corinthians because again some very beautiful passages here up up up, up. got to back up i'm always my, I got some kind of electrical charge in my fingers. I don't have to touch my mouse pad. It moves everything up. Just if I get close. Ephesians chapter 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. All right? So we're in time past. Look at it again. He walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. And again, let me go back to the Greek where we can get a little bit of translation on that. That is Ephesians right here, right? The prince, the archon. There you go. There's your archon of the power of the air. Okay, there you are right there, air. Uh, and that's actually where we get it from the Greek to the word air in English is a Greek word is what that is. All right. So we know that that is a truly an archon. You walk according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And, you know, that's basically the devil is what it is. But that devil is an archon. That's why Paul said you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and spirits. Uh, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. And those great ones, what do they want? They want your soul. You know, this is, we are in such an evil age. We're in such an evil, evil age. All right, last part here I want to just share with you a little bit here. And then uh, I'll be actually, I'm going to be doing a video um, speaking about my father-in-law. Uh, just a little small tribute uh, to him. Uh, it has been a tremendous loss for the family here. Uh, tremendous loss for many people because a man never, if you've ever met my father-in-law, you couldn't help but love him. Uh, let's, let's real quick though here in closing here, I want to share with you 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world to come to naught. Again, the princes of this world. Now, that can be applied in two different ways. Again, because the word is archons. It could be the fact that these fallen angels that are running the things on this earth. It could also be 
uh, people like uh, a potentate. It could be uh, a chief rabbi, because remember, it's both Jews and Gentiles that are in this together that are turned against the apostles. And, and don't hold that against the Jews and the Gentiles per se, because half of them, according to what we saw over here in Acts chapter 14, half actually believed. But then the archons turned the ones that didn't believe against those that did and began to try to kill them, stone them. And this is what we are suffering in our family now. There has been, over the last couple of years, we've had, several attempts satan is busy and it's not people it's those demonic entities in behind the scenes so i hope you understand that it's not to say oh this person no no it's just like the scripture says in the book of acts and we'll go back to it right before we finish here but we speak watch it how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor the princes of this world that come to naught. So don't get your wisdom from all these fallen angels and their technology or, their, or the fallen angels and their running of the Church of the Vatican or the whatever other hierarchy religion there is out there. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. None of them. For had they known it, they would have not have crucified the Lord. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Okay, For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So you don't get it by your eyes. You don't get it by your ears. It's a revelation that God puts within you. That's what it is. And as I said, I will just jump back over here one last time. So you understand, not all the Jews nor the Gentiles were against those that were truly believers. But those, and of course it was the apostles that were trying to get the message out. And they were doing great signs and wonders. You know what's funny is even here, and it's not really, I don't say it as a joke, but what I mean is very serious. Even the things that we have suffered here recently, we saw such great miracles. But in the end, those archons took one last punch. Notice what it says, verse 4, but the multitude of the city was divided, part held with the Jews, part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers, with the archons, to use them despitefully to stone them, they were aware of it and fled to Listeria. Notice, it was, that's, that's an attack to kill them. And who's the one that stirred them up? It's the rulers. They may not even realize them stirring them up, especially in our day here that we're living in now. Even with all the technology that they're using, the implants and things like that, that little thing that they've been able to get so many people to get stuck in their arm that's got all kinds of chips inside of their alien technology, that is going to be used to where those people would have no idea what they're doing. They may be right there to stone you and not even know, and, not, and they not even know what they're doing. Why? Because the rulers use them despitefully they're using them just like they say they become bioweapons poor people don't even know what they've gotten themselves into they don't realize what they have become that's why i say the attack is on it may take a little fleeing but one way or the other, we're going to stand for Jesus Christ, for his promise, for his word, and we're not going to be silenced. And there are ears that would understand what that means. I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live. God bless you. Have a good evening. Uh, please be sure to watch the video I'll be doing next. 
regarding my father and our family. Thank you.